Jazzcast Pros. When I come to discipline my children, I must include myself in this disciplinary action. I must display self-control, clear communication, and expectations. When I speak, respect is there. Respect is there. I shouldn't have to say, I'm your father. I shouldn't have to say, I am a man. I shouldn't have to say, I am your parent, because respect is there. Most of us as fathers, we're not in the homes. So we don't get the chance to instill that from young. When you're not in the home, it's difficult. It's also depressing. It's depressing and, sh- and, and shameful when you have these mothers who withhold their children out of spite, who only call you when it's time for the ass whipping. And it's time when, when they feel disrespected, even though they're the ones who are encouraging and, and not putting down the, the rules and battling boundaries. They're giving five-year-olds the authority of a king. You're the man of the house. That's, that's not how that works. You get them a darty without boundaries, without discipline or self-control, all they're going to do is be destructive. And they're going to be destructive eventually even towards you. You must be firm and you must be consistent in your deliverance and discipline. Greetings, greetings. Welcome to Father Torch, the podcast to help you, the new and renewed fathers, cope with the anxiety and stress of fatherhood so you can be the dad you wish you had. I'm your host, Ra, founder of A Biblical Foundation, an artist, an illustrator, if you will, a father of nine. My mission is to help you reclaim your power and ease your concerns about being a father in today's social climate. I'd like to first shout out Creative Pizza for their sponsorship. I'd like to shout out the delicious and non-soggy crust of a personal pizza. Casual, fresh, and absolutely delicious. Try it out. Mention Father Torch. 766 Monroe Avenue. Let me get to it. I took a little epiphany turn not too long ago, um, and hopefully you will like what I have to say and what I've learned from my epiphany. But today's episode has to deal with disappearing. And disappearing for men is different for women. There's some subtleties that in, in areas that we overlook at times, and we tend to blur the line because nowadays the roles of parenthood is changed. Because of the definitions, the wordplay, the double talk, we as men even more lost than, than, than ever before. I can't say it doesn't affect women as well, but I only can speak from a man because I am a man and I am a father. So I only can speak from my experience and wisdom. So if this concerns you and, and what you're about to hear uh, alarms you, please feel free to leave a comment. Feel free to contact me. I am not hard to find. Okay, so let's get to it. So let's understand the concept of disciplinary. Some of us go into the Bible sayings, uh, biblical, so most of us go to it right away, right? You know, uh, but which which is nothing wrong with that. However, we must, we must take this with consideration of culture, of environment, as well as personalities, right? My favorite book, Proverbs or Enoch, Proverbs 18, uh, 19, 18, excuse me. Discipline your child while they are in hope. Otherwise, you will ruin their lives. Now, <laughs> that is very plain and very direct. And it has truth to it. Because if we don't give them a sense of direction and don't give them a sense of discipline and correction, they will run amok. It doesn't matter who and what culture you are, what color you deem yourself to be or represent. If you do not give your child structure, discipline, self-control, and they'll teach these things, they run amok or won't be able to function 100%. It's important that I say this, especially to my fathers. If you are not disciplined, self-controlled, and you don't have the experience of what that means or how that affects you, much less your child, then you are doing more harm than good. For one, as fathers, we must not take it personal. When your child disobeys or is uh, disobedient, we must not take it harshly and um, let it bat us down that something you are doing is wrong. Like, what did I do wrong to deserve this? Or what what did I did not do when my child is disobedient or they're out there doing the foolishness? Whatever it may be. I'm not going to cast no judgment. Whatever it may be. Understand that discipline is a fragile thing. 
Because if you do too much, you hurt them. And if you do too little, you ruin them. You see, you see the fragility, you see the unbalance in that. You see the sense of why you must have self-control before you can give discipline of control and discipline of self-esteem. Disciplinary method, it, it comes with communication. You must first have a relationship with you. You must first have that communication clear that, that when you are giving, speaking, and showing an example or illustrating disciplinary actions, it is clear the expectation is not mixed or out the way. Many of us men don't know how to deal with our emotions and don't know how to deal with the emotions which we are presented at that moment of situation. So our disciplinary actions con- seems confusing. I give you an example. I cannot say I'm going to discipline my child for something that I'm doing currently. Meaning, if I'm out there acting a fool and I'm going to discipline my child for acting a fool, what is my message? If I'm out here hoeing and I want my daughter or son to stop hoeing or act like a hoe and do things foolishly, but yet I'm out here doing it and thinking that they don't see me, but I want to discipline them on the fact that they should not do it, you see the, the dilemma there? You know, you, you see the, the contradictory? You have to understand, despite what we think of this generation and this new generation, pulling the wool over the eye is not exactly the easiest thing anymore. And lying does not help you. So it doesn't matter how big and bad you are, they will find a way, right? Mm-hmm. They will find a path and a way to succeed and do all that they can do and what they need to do. It won't be, I can't do it because you know, you won't let me do it. They find a way. You have to instill the will, there's still the balance of obedience, the balance of love and the balance of overstanding communication. But if you can't, if you don't have that in you, self-control, esteem, discipline, right? You can't give it because all you're doing is hurting because monkey see, monkey do. It's vague and could be racist as that sound Children see and often mimic from the environment in which they value, which is they grow up. So they value only what it is given. So if you value double standard or double talk, then that's what they would do. They would doubt what you say and do what they want and still get in trouble and still blame you. So my point is, as men, as fathers, it is imperative to be utterly honest with yourself and clear in your action, in discipline, in word and sound. I say this from experience because the fact is it was very confusing being a father trying to discipline whilst I trying to grow. There's a lot of things that I wasn't taught, so it was in the air, right? Because, you know, everybody wants to be different or better or best from their own or previous guardian, despite whatever mental and spiritual oppression that has happened or trauma. Everybody wants to do better. But you can't do better if you don't have self-control, if you don't have obedience, if you don't have the relationship with you and your creator, right? When I say you and your creator, whether you believe it or not, you wasn't born out of thin air. It doesn't matter what you believe. I'm not here to debate your... God complex or lack of there is. However, you're not born of nothing. So pay homage and pay respect. Two, love yourself and have a self relationship with yourself enough to know that what you're doing and what you're going to give and the message you're going to declare must be of sound judgment and a sound righteousness. It means that you must be clear in your decision and in, in, in disciplinary. Some men are more physical than verbal. Some women are more physical than verbal. It, it, it varies. There's four different types of disciplinary methods, right? You can be the authority, which you don't regard the next one's feelings. It is simply, you know what? Do as I say, as I say, because I say, right? And they don't care what you feel. They don't care if you're hurt. It doesn't bother me. It doesn't mean I have no empathy. It doesn't mean it doesn't bother me. It doesn't care what you say and what you think. Then you have the passive parent, right? Boys would be boys. Yo, oh, let them be. It's okay. Hey, it's all right. You know, I don't like it, but you know, what can I do? Right? It's like, eh, 
No. To some degree, again, you, you got to pick and choose of what it is may be. When you are, when you are disciplinary, you have to have more than one way to discipline. It cannot be physically all the time, and it cannot be verbal all the time. It cannot be strictly harsh punishment all the time, and it can't be, you know, the Indian giving style, you know, take away everything, give it back, take away, give it back. It cannot be always one absolute. You must judge it by the situation, the consequences of that situation, the action, the personality of the child, because not every child is the same. You can't say this child is the same as this child. You can't treat the bigger one like the little one. You can't treat the little one like the big one. You know your child more than I. You know what they can handle and what they cannot handle. Sometimes in some situations, you have to force ripe them. You have to force the growth or the development because of the environment in which we are in. If we're in a war zone, I cannot Google Gaga this talk. I got to be straight, blunt. I mean, I got to be right on you. But if I'm in, a, in, in an environment that I control, then I should be able to give you the message, declare what it is, you know, be mindful of what it is I'm saying and what I'm doing, and be clear. And do it in love, not anger, not frustration. I hate to see it when I see children and their parents, and I see parents cuss their children like dogs. Get the F over here. I can't damn you. I can't. It, it, it's like you you are degrading them. And then you do it with a wide audience of people around, whether it be your friends, your family. That does nothing for them. All I do is build up resentment, rebelliousness, you know, and 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 that, not for nothing, disrespect. Because if all you need to show me no respect, then how can I, as your child, look at you with respect and regard, admiration and honor, if all you did is teach me how to disrespect myself and others? Discipline is more than simply just Correcting the rod. We have to understand there is proper guidance. Being a parent, I, I think it should be something that we taught. Proper parents, parenting should be something that is taught, you know, from your elders in your village, right? But it'd be something that it comes with proper guidance, meaning you know how it feels and you know where it ends. Consistency is key. Consistency, follow up. Deliverance in your message, at the time of the message, calm, calm mean you must be calm. You must be calm in your thought. It doesn't mean your feeling is not going to feel like, man, I would, man, I want to feel gold you. I want to kick you. I want to, I want to lash you. I want to do all kinds of things to get my frustration that you cannot understand the lesson in which is being taught to you. But as parents, as adults, as fathers, man, as fathers, as men, we must have better foresight. You must have better consistency and follow up. You cannot be ghost and then still think they're going to learn the lesson. You cannot be harsh and barbarian if you think that that's going to be the best way because they don't often learn the lesson. They just learn a better way of doing what you do, which is beat the truth out or, or instill fear. Not for nothing. To instill fear and just strictly beat the child. Understand you are actually teaching them to live in fear. Not like quivering in fear, but live in fear of succeeding or developing new ways or better ways of doing things. Because all they associate, they change, they lessen, is with ass whipping. They associate it with ass whippings. They associate that if I do this, if I try this, if I learn this, it's an ass whipping. So what I do in life? I start to do things with limitations. I start to do things because it's traumatization. I'm, I'm reliving this moment all the time. Especially when the message was not clear and they had full understanding of the wrong and there was no correction. Discipline comes with correction. When you are disciplined, you must have a correction so the message can be delivered and that it can be clear understanding of why consequences, good or bad, happens. My brothers, my sisters, my parents, it is imperative and important that you are consistent and fear with your consequences. And know the difference between a controlled environment consequence 
and not a control environment consequence. Control environment consequences in your house. You control the consequences in your surroundings, in your household. Outside of your household is uncontrolled consequences. So you must prepare them for the consequences, good or bad. Again, when you are outside the control consequence, consequence. For example, how many how many of us have experienced a child telling you, "Oh, I can't stand you," or oh, "You do this and you do that. I can't wait to leave," or or or, or experience ones who run away. The control uncontrolled consequence does not have a balance of well in between. It's either high or extremely low, meaning that there's less forgiveness in that method and message. When you're in a control environment, which is your home, which is the home you prepared for them and yourself, of course, it's control that basically, yes, they will feel, you know, they will feel the hurt. They will feel the pain. But you were there to consult them. You were there to, con- to, to comfort them. You were there to show them, talk with them, communication now, reason the consequence and the actions which taken, which got to that point. It sounds difficult, believe it or not, this happens in seconds. It sounds like a long process, but it happens in seconds. Do not discipline your child through anger. It does not deliver the message clearly. You get a quick result. Oh, yes, you get a quick result. I smashed one time. You get a quick result. However, you missed the message and the timing is gone. You only have a so much a second of a window to make that message clear. Hey y'all, it's your girl, Rosa Marie. And if you are enjoying this episode, check out Child Care Made Simple, the podcast to help you, the daycare owner, human resource professional, and policymaker navigate ever changing landscape of child care by providing you simple, safe, and effective solutions. I am the owner of Marvelous Minds Academy in Rochester, New York. My mission is to leave the world better than I found it by ensuring child care is not a barrier to progress for parents and helping young learners think limitless. Subscribe to the Child Care Made Simple podcast on the JazzCast Pros Network, available right here on the podcast player you're listening to right now. By all means, I am not passivizing. I am not shaming anyone who knows by spinning a ride what it does to the child. But understand, you were in charge of their development. You were in charge of what and how they learn. It's your duty to observe how they learn and what causes shutdown, what causes uh, motivation, ambition, right? What drives them, right? And all you do is beat them down mentally, physically, emotionally, and verbally. How they develop, how they function. How are we so quick to kick them out or dismay them, disown them if we did not train them how to deal with certain things. And training, you have to go through it live. It cannot be at a distance and it cannot be, well, I did my best, wash my hand, I'm done, right? I'm done. No. The thing is, we will feel that way. That's the truth of it. You will feel that way. I felt that way many times. I washed my hand, but I know I can't wash my hand. And I'm trying to convince myself that I can do it, but I know I cannot do that. They are a part of me and they are me in one way or fashion or another. I cannot be a darting in that sense. When I come to discipline my children and discipline my loved ones, I myself is included in that. I must display self-control. I must display clear communication and expectations. You must be firm and you must be consistent in your deliverance and discipline. Nothing wrong with taking a time out before you do it. Nothing wrong with cooling it down before you deliver it. Nothing is wrong, my fathers, with admitting where you fall short in this lesson or action. It doesn't make you weak. It doesn't make you soft, you know, a, a, a run over, I mean. Like, you you know, you, you, you're a doormat. You was once there. You was once there. There. Let me remind you, you was once in this position that you was either giving it or getting it. Don't forget your responsibility. Don't forget 
your obligation and duty to the full fulfillment and development of your child. It doesn't matter if they are a teenager. It doesn't matter if they are a toddler. It is your responsibility and your obligation, your duty, if you will, to instill this, to have the authority to show discipline. But most of all, and most importantly, self-control. You cannot instill obedience, love, liberty, prosperity, guidance, and expectation through anger, through fear, through physicality. You cannot do it solely or absolutely mindset. Or I should say absolute mindset. You cannot do it this way because, again, it will hurt them and cripple their development and cripple their perception of the world and yourself. You want the child to be able to come to you. You want the child to be able to talk and reason with you and understand why you had to do what you had to do. And also, start from small. Talk with them. Reason with them. Start from small. Implement their respect, their honor, the means of prosperity, the love and understanding. Start with them with the God in them. Connect them with you. Bind them with the ideal Love and admiration what obedience come with. Obedience does not mean submit. Obedience means that I would rather please you than hurt you. I'd rather get praises from you because I admire and respect you confidently that I respect and honor your actions, your loyalty, your love for me, your protection. Most of us as fathers, we're not in the homes. So we don't get the chance to instill that from young. We don't get the chance to say, yes, we are doing this and we are doing this from the heart because the fact is we we have to deal with distracting factors. When you're not in the home, it's difficult. It's difficult, especially when you're not co-parenting or not getting along. It's difficult. It's also depressing. It's depressing and and, and shameful when you have these mothers who withhold their children out of spite, who only call you when it's time for the ass whipping. And it's time when, when they feel disrespected, even though they're the ones who are encouraging and, and not putting down the, the rules and battling boundaries and, and of the children. They're giving five-year-olds, you know, the authority of a king, you're the man of the house. That's, that's not how that works. You can't give them the authority if you don't know how to give them that authority. You don't know how to teach them that. You get, you get them a authority without boundaries, without discipline or self-control. All they're going to do is be destructive. And they're going to be destructive eventually even towards you. It's a shame that we have grown in such a dividing nation with such a powerful spirit. There's many of us out here who are struggling, we are out here who cannot see their children through means of ignorance and spitefulness. Even the law supports it. Even the system supports this ignorance. We as a people must come back to that village, must come back to that love and understanding and stop blaming our younger generation solely for the shit that they do, knowing full well that we did not teach them or wasn't consistent with it. How long can we blame to say, oh, well, you know, children have been children, but that been happening for decades, centuries. The difference is, is that we had a village. We knew the importance of that child growing. We knew the importance of what that child needed to grow to succeed. It just now, we turn our heads, we turn our backs, we, t- we shut down our empathy and, and connectedness, that network, we shut it down. We no longer get together, reason, and say what we can do to help and what can we do to make sure that you do what you need to do that this child grows. No, we get into straight judgment, persecution, damnation, cussing, it, you, you name it. We go straight to it. I wish I can blame it solely on our traumas and conditioning, but There's nothing stopping us from doing that again. There's nothing stopping us from getting back to that village. Because if we go back to that village mindset, disciplinary, word power, and song would be a norm. You wouldn't have to hear my voice or my my opinion or, or even thoughts of how we should go about doing this. It's imperative that we that we look after our children and we look after them, especially our young adults. And guide them in a way that they can survive and live our legacy and have ownership 
That's something else we're going to talk about. Owning. Ownership. Back to the discipline. You must have self-control. You must be clear in your, your deliverance, your expectations, your, 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 you know, what it is that is you're trying to implement and the consequence. Although it feels unfair and unjust, you must be fair with it. That is why it's important that you don't do this in anger. You don't do this out of frustration or spitefulness. That you that you center your emotions or remove it altogether and deal with the logic and the development and the fundamental aspect and techniques of being a disciplinary. You must understand the techniques, the outcome. You must you must bear the boundaries even while giving the consequences. You cannot hurt them to learn them. That's all I'm going to say. You cannot hurt them to learn them. That means don't stunt them. Don't stunt their growth. We all been there. And Lord knows, man, I, I, man, I have done many wrongs. I have wronged many people. My consequences didn't make it lighter or better in the sense that, you know, I got away with it. No, I didn't. Trust and believe. I Lesson learned. But it didn't hurt me in the point that I would never try to do better or I won't do better. I'm not living through fear. I'm not living through confusion. My emotions are not crazy or, you know, or out of control. I have discipline on myself. I love myself. I am free. I have mastered the thought of being free. Emancipate my emotions, my physicality, my worries. All because of discipline. All because of the discipline I have. The obedience I have to the creator. It does not mean I am perfect. It does not mean that I won't do no wrong or I'm invulnerable to temptation. No, 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 no. It means that I have accountability. It means that I am accountable for my actions. It means that I am master of my destiny. And I understand what it means to pros and cons of my life. This is what you need to teach your children. This is what you need to have within you. This is why. It is important to be self-discipline, self-control, self-esteem, master of your thoughts and emotional intelligence plays a harsh fundamental truth to who you are. That's all I have for you folks. My time is up. I thank you for coming. I thank you for listening. I thank you for subscribing. Please listen to me to any platform that you listen to any music podcast from Apple to iHeartRadio, to Spotify. Find me, fathertorch.com. Leave a message. Check me out. And if you get inspired enough, check out abimelech.org. Seek me out. I'm your neighborhood. I am in your household. I am your friend. I am your brother. I could be your father. (laughs) And also, check out Curator Pizza, the, the most casual, personal pizza you can ever get. Fresh dough, fresh veggies, unlimited at that, right? Homemade sauce, vegan meatballs, and sexy cheese. Listen, check it out. 766 Monroe Avenue. You cannot miss them. Create a pizza, y'all. Jazz Cast Pros. Are you an entrepreneur at heart with the mind of a hustler? Then you found the perfect podcast to help you turn your side hustle into a profitable small business so that you can support yourself and your community. Welcome to the Heart of the Hustle podcast. I am your host, Coach Mo, an award-winning serial entrepreneur with an unconventional business background. You can call me Motivation. I am a predicate felon who struggled to survive in the workforce. And I wanted a better quality of life for me and my family. And that's when I realized that entrepreneurship was my best course of action for reform. I am the owner of the Groom Room Men's Spa and Lounge, Rochester, New York's premier day spa for men's self-care and wellness. Over the pandemic, I began coaching struggling entrepreneurs inside my private Facebook group called Business Behaviors. 
With this podcast, my mission is to teach you all of the things I wish I knew while starting a business so that you can avoid the pitfalls of entrepreneurship and turn your passion into profits legally. Join me and expert guests as we cover topics such as business formation and legal entities, should your company be a nonprofit or for profit, mental wellness for CEOs, how to build community, business credit and budgets, and how to get a return on your investment. Are you ready to elevate from a hustler's mindset to that of a CEO? Subscribe now so that you'll be the first to know when new episodes drop. The Heart of the Hustle podcast on the JazzCast Pros Network. Over and out.